like Gowanusian. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss. Um, so, right? Um, so I'm here to talk about something called the Sponge Park. So in 2008, um, I worked on this project, or basically invented this project called the Sponge Park, and I basically was faced with the idea or the, the problem of how do you absorb surface water runoff around the Gowanus while also providing new open space for people. And so the idea is that open spaces, wetlands, basically act like sponges. We're not installing sponges in the ground, but I have another story about that. So the, the Gowanus used to be a swamp, but over the last couple hundred years, what's happened is that we've channelized uh, the water and piped the water and contained it, um, but it still really wants to be moving around. There's nowhere for that water to go, though. So when we have even a normal rain, we get this condition of having all of the surface water runoff um, on our streets. And what happens is that runs to the street ends and it brings with it the cigarette butts and the garbage and the oil and the detritus and it all ends up on the street ends. Not to mention the fact that we have this combined sewer system which is dumping all of these combined sewer effluents into the Gowanus as well, which you can see the raw sewage actually sitting there on the top of the canal. Um, and it's really a pretty disgusting situation. So what we did was we really worked with the community and a lot of different community groups on this project. The initial work was done in conjunction with the Gowanus Canal Conservancy, and we got some early funding from the New York State Council on the Arts. Um, we then uh, expanded our, our reach and worked with the um, Center for Urban Pedagogy, um, as well as uh, NWIPIC, um, and uh, the Gowanus Canal dredgers. The uh, New England Interstate Water Pollution Control Commission provided the funding um, for this first stage uh, that was basically about, uh, basically we were creating all the construction drawings um, for a first pilot project. We then um, brought in the Gowanus Canal Community Development Corporation um, and got a grant from the Department of Environmental Conservation, a state agency, um, to develop a maintenance manual. And then from there, we still needed money for construction. So um, some of the money for construction actually came from an allocation from city council because of community support for the project. And then some of the money is actually coming from a very large grant that we got from the state um, through the Environmental Facilities Corporation. Um, but the construction is actually being administered by the Department of Environmental, P Environmental Protection um, in conjunction with the um, DOT and the Parks Department. So it's kind of a, a crazy thing. Um, so when we started working on this project, uh, city planning was actually doing a rezoning for the area, and you can see there was an idea about a, a continuous esplanade, green esplanade along the waterfront, and we said, that's great, and one of the things that we should look at is how big that space will be, and so we advocated for a 40-foot setback from the waterfront. Um, and we showed what could happen within that space, within a, with a whole series of design drawings. But one of the things that's important about the Gowanus and significant and unique about the Gowanus is that it is an industrial space, right? So you had these buildings that actually um, abutted the water to facilitate a commercial exchange, and that is unique to industrial sites, right? So we thought, well, okay, you have these situations which are shown in the black um, on that diagram um, where the buildings are actually precluding um, a continuous esplanade. So rather than see that as a constraint, we saw it as an opportunity. So what we did was created an idea of an urban promenade with these walkways that would bring green infrastructure back into the community to create an, uh, an entire green district. So um, basically, this is an overview of the whole site. And the idea here is that the entire community would be privileged rather than just the buildings that are on that waterfront edge. So this is a view showing one of the, the street ends, um, and uh, you can see how you have this, this continuous landscape that actually goes underneath uh, a walkway. So that's a really important component of this design, the stacking of public open space over a green infrastructure system. Here um, was our idea for a new cultural center um, in some of the uh, the historic uh, industrial buildings. And then also this is a very important slide because um, some of the early support and funding actually came from uh, Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez, whose husband had actually proposed to her on the banks of the Gowanus, I kid you not. So, uh, so this slide was an homage to, to Nydia, who's been a great supporter all along. Um, so now we're doing this first pilot project um, at Second Street. 
And what we're doing is actually creating a landscape that can absorb the 1.2 inch storm. Now, I know this sounds kind of nerdy and geeky, but, but it's important um, because basically the way we design green infrastructure systems is for this storm because there were 100 storms last year in New York City and of those storms, 90% were less than 1.2 inches per event. Now, that's a regulatory standard that you design for. So what we've done is create a landscape that can absorb those storms. But it's, it's complicated, actually, um, dealing with these regulated spaces. Um, because to give you an example, the sediment underneath the canal is controlled by the US Army Corps of Engineers, who also controls the water because it's a navigable waterway. But the shade over that water is controlled by the Department of Environmental Conservation. Now, the DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation, also controls the first five feet of sediment. Um, in the upper area, or the first, you know, the, the ground, dirt. Um, but the ground surface is actually controlled by the Department of Transportation, who's technically the owner, right? But the Parks Department controls all the green spaces. And then, to, to kick it off, like, so the topper is that the, the Department of Environmental Protection actually controls the water going over the surface of this ground. So, and, they, and there's like crazy permits you have to get for all of these different agencies. There are 200 potential permits that you have to get for any waterfront site. So it takes an incredible act of perseverance to actually do these projects, particularly when you're working for community groups, you're not working for big developers. Um, and I'm happy to say that we're actually doing a first pilot, but meanwhile, the area was designated an EPA Superfund site, so that added another layer of complications. But we are continuing on, and I have this image of this first pilot, and now I want to show you a video of how the whole thing um, works. So, move to video. There we go. Okay, so there were these um, uh, green streets. They've taken those out. We're putting in street swales, which were like the street swales that Brad was talking about. Um, they're part of the green infrastructure standards. And then what we've done is, is put in a series of bioretention cells. We've created it in a modular system so that it can be replicated for all of the 10 street ends around the Gowanus. Now, this integrated sidewalk sedimentation basin, that takes all the cigarette butts and the, and the coffee cups and all the crap out of the water um, and, and keeps it away from the planting. And then there's also a pedestrian path with a sand filter underneath, because we decided to throw in a little bit of extra protection to maybe capture a couple more of those storms above the 1.2 inches. So here you can say it rains and the water goes down the street. And what the, the sedimentation basin does is it distributes the water evenly to the different cells. And then the cells actually have um, little cuts in them to allow the water to go back and forth because we want all the plants to get the same amount of water, right? So the, the, the water will get absorbed by the plants and by the soil. But then if you have another rain, you know, again, um, it's going to be absorbed in that, but we might have an overflow, and that would go into the sand filter. And then what ultimately happens is the cleaner water will go into the Gowanus Canal. And, you know, over the last eight years that we've been working on this, it's been really kind of remarkable seeing the transformation of the area because people go there much more than they did, you know, eight years ago. Um, and. Uh, one of the, I just want to end with a, a quote um, by one of the people at the Gowanus Canal, or not at the um, Gowanus Canal Conservancy, at the Department of Environmental Protection, who said, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is. And I have to tell you, I've really learned that lesson on this project. So thank you very much.